In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your old will dream dreams. Acts 2.17 Wake up, wake up, wake up! That's what I was yelling when I woke up on June 13th, 2020. I was having a very disturbing dream. In my dream, I walked down the stairs to the front door. In my dream, it was not the kind of door that I have. It had one bolt lock on it. Immediately, I saw that the bolt lock was indeed locked. But also, in that split second, the door opened and this eight to nine foot tall, faceless black thing came bursting in. And it was after me. All at the same time, I was hearing the fisted knuckles of a distraught human being rapidly knocking as if they were trying to get in. I never saw where the knocking was coming from because the large, black, silent monster had covered me as it backed me into the bedroom where my husband still slept. I tried to scream, but very little was being produced in my throat. This attack was completely silent except for the desperate knocking and my weak screams. I woke up to my outside voice saying, wake up, wake up, wake up. At that point, the dream ended and I was a little shook up, but not terrified. Actually, considering how terrified I was in the dream, I was kind of surprised that I wasn't more upset. I think it was around 4.30 in the morning. I got up, went to the bathroom, and proceeded to go downstairs, I guess to check the locks, which in hindsight wasn't the smartest thing to do because what if my dream would have actually happened right there? I proceeded down the stairs, seeing the soft glow of my tree light that had been left on the night before. I started to open up some of the blinds and looked outside. Everything was calm, and I could hear the birds waking up. A few early birds were singing their songs. I went to the door we call the front door, looked at the lock. I don't have any bolt locks. Checked it with my hand and found that it was indeed locked. But in my dream, locked or not, it didn't matter. This got me to thinking, and I prayed, Lord, if I have opened up the door to any evil or fear in my life, I'm shutting it right here and now. I officially shut any and all doors that I thought were locked but weren't. And with the authority vested in me by my Lord Jesus Christ, I close these doors and lock them in Jesus' name. After surveying the room and outside one more time, I went back to bed. I must have laid there for a good 30 minutes, just trying to sort out what I had just experienced. I concluded that the giant black kind of blobby thing with no face was probably the actual spirit of fear. Fear doesn't have a face unless we give it one, and then it takes on the face of whatever we're afraid of. It was trying to bust its way into my life through an area I thought was locked to the enemy. My prayer of confession and then authoritative declaration took care of that. At first I thought the incessant knocking could be another person who was running from the same spirit and was trying to get into my house for help because they think I can help them fight the spirit. But after contemplating it, I thought maybe it was Jesus trying to desperately remind me that only he could help me. I believe it was him, and that's why I prayed and woke up. Throughout the whole ordeal, I never felt any pain or physical discomfort. It was entirely emotional for me, and evidently spiritual as well. Then I slowly drifted to sleep again. In my second dream of the night, I found myself held captive by a group of people with guns. They were killing people at random, and I was going from place to place in the house, trying to hide from them. They had on uniforms of some kind, and they were very angry. There were about 50 to 100 people that they had taken hostage, and they were mostly kept in one room of the house. For some reason, I was trying to make something happen to help all of us escape. After narrowly escaping detection in the bathroom, I made my way to another bedroom where I hid in a small but deep closet. I heard someone coming into the room. I held my breath as they opened one of the double doors. Even though I was as still as I could be, this person with a machine gun had found me. It only took a second to realize that this person was a friend. She had on their uniform, but she was looking to escape. She told me that she had overheard a conversation I was having earlier with some of my fellow captives, telling her that we could escape if we would only ask God for help and believe. I had been telling them about how the Lord was able to blind the eyes of our captors and we could walk right out the door. Well, it was possible, I said. It had been done in the Bible in the book of Acts, after all. She said that she was willing to believe that. And would, would I walk out the door with her to get some help? Sure, I said. 
and we proceeded to walk right through the people with guns past our captors. As we passed our fellow captives, they all just stared at us with their mouths open, and we left the house, then the property, and we knew we were home free. The moment we turned the corner, we jumped up and down and hugged one another, praising God because he had just saved our lives. In my dream, we found ourselves outside of a duplex where I used to live in Florida. We were outside of our Christian friend's side of the duplex. They were alone, and they listened to our story. However, they did not believe what we were saying. It was not too long after we arrived that their home started to fill up with people. They were having a graduation party for their son. It was at that time that I woke up. What I realized from that dream was that most people won't hear with years of faith and therefore will remain captives and eventually be killed by the enemy, but that I should keep giving the message of faith because I may not realize whom the Lord is trying to set free. It could be that he wants to save one of my captors. Unexpected deliverance. I shouldn't try to figure it out. I should just keep giving the message of faith to everyone. Recently in our Thursday night study, we were looking at Daniel 9, 20 through 23, and specifically the last part of verse 23, which says, At the beginning of your supplications, the command was issued, and I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. So give heed to the message and gain understanding of the vision. I was struck with that line that the angel Gabriel spoke to Daniel. So give heed to the message. How was he supposed to heed that message? especially since it was not even a message for his time, and he would never see it come to pass. Well, in this instance, the only way Daniel could heed that message was to write it down, which he did, and which we are now studying. I realized that the dream I had did not only apply to me, but to the body of Christ at large. Here's the message. And as for the heeding of it, each person must listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying to them, and then act upon it. The message is for the church on the entire planet, and the message is this. Many of us are living our lives on this earth thinking that the doors to evil are shut and locked, but the truth is we are being deceived. In the natural realm, the doors are locked, but not so in the spiritual realm. Jesus said this in John 14, 30, I will not speak much more with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. We see that the devil has nothing in Jesus. He's got no part of him, in him or on him. We, however, as flawed human beings, sometimes have sin in our lives. And doors to evil are opened by that sin. Sometimes those doors that we thought were shut and locked are actually the things that give the devil the right to barrel into our lives and wreak havoc upon our hearts. Does the devil have something in you? Does he have something on you? If so, before we can heed the messages that God gives to us or even receive the messages that he wants to give to us, we must be clean and clear of any of the devil's hold on us. 1 John 1, 9 says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The enemy would lie to us and tell us that we need years of counseling or a month of fasting to be forgiven and set free from some of those strongholds. But I believe this scripture is saying that deliverance is as close as a prayer. Once we know we've sinned, let's confess it right away and not hold on to it. If we believe this one verse, we can be cleansed as often as we need to be and we will be useful in this fight for souls. These times are evil and they are going to get worse. After my first dream, I confessed any sin and asked the Lord to forgive me. Then I personally shut the door and locked it to the enemy through my declaration. We may have to do this daily to keep our vessels clean for our master's use in these last days. Church, we are the first and last line of defense against the enemy of our souls, our nation, and our world. If we don't pray, this world doesn't have a prayer. Heed the message today. Get clean in your soul. Spend time with God to hear what the Lord is saying. Then do whatever it takes to heed that message he's personally giving to you. Don't try to model someone else's relationship with God. There's far too much of that. You can hear directly from God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you, it says in James. The one who presses into God is the one who is going to hear the most. Be the closest and be used the most by God. Jesus' prayer for us is that we bear much fruit. And so our Heavenly Father will be glorified. And as always, preach the gospel because we never know who's listening. It could be an enemy whom God wants to save and transform to become one of his servants. No one is too far gone. If they are, it's not of our business. We're in the business of our Father, and we're employed by him to share the good news that Jesus can set people free from fear and from anything else that seeks to destroy us. And we don't do this in our own strength. We fight spiritual battles with spiritual weapons. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. 2 Corinthians 10.4 Body of Christ, are we asleep in the light? As Keith Green has said, wake up, wake up, wake up. Stop being afraid and heed the message.